Is grandma harassing you about your questionable life choices and need a reason to leave? Do you want to make yourself look more popular than you really are to the strangers around you? Or maybe you just need to hear the sound of your phone ringing to mask the pain of your loneliness. If so, then stick around because we'll be making an app where it seems like somebody actually wants to talk to you anytime you want. Go ahead and delete all comments. Delete everything involving the title. Delete the counter variable and the increment counter method. Delete the app bar. Delete the children in the column and delete the floating action button. Remove the center widget, and then wrap the column in a stack. Make the column's main axis alignment, main axis alignment dot end. As a child of the column, make a text widget. We'll set the text to color for now. Give it a text align of dot center, and a style of text style with a font size of 50. Make a second text widget with a placeholder phone number for now. And we'll style it with text style with a font size of 18 and a color of colors.gray. Go ahead and hot reload to update the app. In the column below the text widgets, we'll make a sized box with a height of media query dot of context dot size dot height divided by 2.2. So the height of the sized box will be the height of the screen divided by 2.2. Below the sized box, make a row widget. Make a child of the row be a column. As a child of that column, add an icon. We'll add it as icons.alarm, a color of colors.white, and a size of 30. As the second child of that column, add a text of just remind me. Below that column, make another column. The first child of that column will be an icon, with icons.message, a color of colors.white and a size of 30. Below the icon, add a text with just message. For that row, add its main axis alignment as main axis alignment.space evenly. Go ahead and hot reload to update the app. Below that row, add a size box with a height of 50. Below the size box, add a row. Make its main axis alignment, main axis alignment dot space evenly. As a child of that row, add a column. As a child of that column, add a gesture detector. As a child of that gesture detector, add a floating action button. As a child of that floating action button, make an icon with icons dot call end and the icon size of 34. The background color of the floating action button will just be colors.red, and then make the on press just null. This is our UI's decline button. Below the gesture detector, just add a text of decline. Hot reload to update the app. Now we'll make the accept button. Highlight the column you just finished and duplicate it below it. In VS Code, you can duplicate it by highlighting it and then holding down the Shift and Alt and pressing the Down key. Change the icon to icons.phone, the background color to colors.green, and then the text to Accept. Hot Reload to show these on screen. Below your last column, add a size box with a height of 60, and then Hot Reload again. Go back up to the top of my homepage state and make a color called background color and you can use my values that I have here. In your scaffold, make a background color and set it to the background color we just made. Hot reload and you'll see that we have to change the text color now. Head up to your theme data and add a text theme parameter. Add theme.ofcontext.textTheme.apply and set body color to colors.white. And while we're here, add debug show checked mode banner to false. Go ahead and hot reload and you'll see that our text color has changed. Head back down to my homepage state and make void init state. Make your super dot init state call. Add system chrome dot set preferred orientations. Pass in a list containing device orientation dot portrait up. This will keep the app in portrait up mode no matter which way the phone's turned. System Chrome requires the services library, so be sure to import it. Next, add System Chrome.set enabled system UI overlays and pass in a list containing system UI overlay dot bottom. This will remove the top status bar from the app. Hot restart to update the UI. We're going to create a temporary button to test our app. Scroll all the way down below your sized box. 
make a raised button with a child of text, just called temp start, and then set on pressed to start, which is a method that doesn't exist yet. Go back up and we're going to create a few variables we need. The first will be from the random class called random and initialize it. Be sure to import the dark math library for random. The next will be a string called caller. You can just set that as empty quotations. The next will be a string called area code. You can just set it to whatever area code you want. The next will be a string called prefix. And you can just set that to empty quotes. The next will be a string called last four. You can just set that to empty quotes as well. And then I'm just pasting in a list called caller list, which is the list of people that will show up as calling. Now let's make that start method we were talking about. Make it void since it won't return anything. Make an int called caller index. Set it to random.nextInt and pass in callerList.length. This will get a random integer from the length of the caller list. Make another integer called pre. Set it to random.nextInt, pass in 899, and then plus 100. This will get a random integer between the range of 100 and 999. And we'll use this as the phone number's prefix. Make another int called LF. Set it to random.nextInt, pass in 8,999, and then plus 1,000. This will get a random range between 1,000 and 9,999, and we'll use this as the last four digits of our phone number. Make a set state call. We'll set prefix to pre.toString, last four to lf.toString, and then caller to caller list and pass in caller index. Go down and change our text to our caller variable. and then format our phone number text to our area code, prefix, and last four. Save everything and do a hot reload. Tap our temp start button and you should see that our name and number changes. Now let's work on our ringtone. We're going to need to use the audio players plugin, so head to your pubspec.yaml and add audio players. I'm using version 0.17.4. The link for the pub.dev page is in the description, so check what version works for you. And then control or command S to run flutter pub git. Head back to your main.dart file and import the package audio players slash audio players dot dart and audio players slash audio cache dot dart. Head back down to my homepage state and add an audio player just called audio player. and add an audio cache called cache, and we're gonna initialize it. Now you need to find a ringtone that'll play. You can go into the phone sound settings if you're looking for something specific. Otherwise, you can just search for ringtones in a search engine. I'll be using the Pixis sound so you can find the link to that in the description. Once you've found your ringtone, right click in your project directory and create a new folder and name it assets, and then drag and drop your ringtone into the assets folder. Now we have to add the ringtone to the pubspec file. List that file just as I have here. And remember, if you don't space this correctly, it'll throw an error. After that, just control or command S to run flutter pub git. Head back to main.dart and create a boolean called rigging. Set it to false. Create a new void method called ring. Make it async. Set our ringing boolean to true. And create a do while loop. Set the while to our ringing boolean. And in the do block, Set our audio player to await cache.play, and then our ringtone. Below that, await a future.delayed, the duration of 3 seconds. Now when we set our phone to ring, it'll ring, and then it'll wait 3 seconds, and then ring again. As long as ringing stays true. Head back to our start method, and at the bottom, call our ring method. So when we hit start, it'll create a random number and caller, and then it'll start the ringing. Now let's make a way to stop the ringing. Make a void method called stop ring. Add audio player with a question mark, and then dot stop. The question mark means that if audio player isn't null, it'll stop. And below that, set our ringing boolean to false. So when we call stop ring, it'll stop the ringtone, and then set ringing to false. Head down to our gesture detector that contains the call end icon and add on tap and set that to stop ring. So now once the phone is ringing, we'll hit the decline button and it'll stop the ringing. Stop the app completely and then rerun it and you'll see that it fails due to a build error. You'll see in the output that we have an SDK error where we need to change the minimum SDK to at least 23. To fix this, head to Android, app, and then build.gradle. In the default config block, change the min SDK version to 23. Be sure to save it, head back to your main.dart file and run it again. Now the app should be running, if it isn't, you should run flutter clean, and also make sure that you save the build.grade file. Now tap the temp start button, 
and you should see that a name and number appears and also the phone should be ringing. And even though you can't hear mine, rest assured that it is ringing. Tap the decline button and the ringing should stop. When you tap the temp start button again, the ringing should start again and the name and number should change. You see we have an overflow error here. We'll fix that once we remove the temp start button. Tap the decline button again and the ringing should stop again. Now let's make our start screen to replace that temporary start button. Below our ringing boolean, make a boolean called start screen, set it to true. In our start method within the set state call, set start screen to false. Head down to your scaffold's background color and make a ternary. So if start screen is true, it'll be colors.black, otherwise it'll just be background color. Head all the way down, and as our second child of the stack, we're going to add an if statement. Set this as if start screen, and add a column, and as its first child added and expanded, with a flex of 2, and then its child as a container, which is a color of colors.black. As the second child of that column, add another expanded, add its flex as 0, and its child a gesture detector. Set on long press to our start method. Make its child a container with a width of double dot infinity so it takes up the whole width of the screen. Make its height 60 and make its color colors dot gray with 900. So what this does on app start is there'll be a black screen with a button at the bottom that we will tap and hold to make the phone ring. And be sure to delete the temporary button. Now let's make a reset method that way we can get back to the start screen. Make it void, call it reset, add audio player with a question mark dot stop again. Set our ringing boolean to false, make a set state call, and set start screen to true. Go back down to our gesture detector that contains the call end icon. Add on double tap and set it to our newly created reset method. Now if we double tap the decline button, it'll go back to the start screen. We are finally done, so hot restart the app. You should be presented with our start screen, with the start button at the bottom that's gray. Now when you long press that button, the name will change, so will the number, and the phone will start ringing. Tap decline once to silence it, and tap decline twice to go back to the start screen. Hopefully you learned something in this video, and let me know of any questions or comments.